Hey everybody, welcome back to the fifth video in the SMA Journey 51 series. Today I want to discuss a procedure that all of us as SMA patients are going to have to go through when we receive the spinraza treatment for our spinal muscular atrophy. And the treatment is called a lumbar puncture, or another name for it would be a spinal tap. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures on your screen so that we can discuss how the lumbar puncture is performed. Then I'm going to show you about a four minute video of a lumbar puncture actually being performed by a couple of doctors. And you can see exactly what we as patients are going to be going through. The first thing that I want to do is I want to try to clear the air. If you ever knew anybody that went through a spinal tap or a lumbar puncture, say 20 or 30 years ago, they'll probably tell you that it wasn't a very comfortable procedure to go through. But with technology the way it is now, and with the amount of sedatives that doctors can use uh, to help numb the area in which the lumbar puncture is going to be performed at, it's not really a bad procedure anymore. And we'll discuss this in further detail later on. But the first picture that you're seeing on your screen is just a, a picture of a lumbar puncture, or again, another name for it is the spinal tap. And what they do is they insert a needle through the small of the back, and they go through the L3 and L4 lumbar vertebra. So this will just give you a picture, and as you can see, the patient is laying down on their side. And there are a couple of ways in which this treatment can be administered. The second picture that you're seeing on your screen is how patients can be positioned. They can either be in a lying position or they can be in a sitting position. For some of us, the lying down position may be more comfortable, but for some of us, like myself, who have had back surgery and have had rods uh, inserted in their uh, spinal cord, it may be more comfortable and more advantageous to be in a sitting position. So either way, you can consult with your doctor and find the position that's best suited for you. The last picture that I want to show you is just some of the equipment that they're going to be using on the lumbar injection. Okay, sterile dressing, gloves, a drape, and you can read through these. These are just basic utensils that the doctor is going to use while they perform the lumbar puncture. The next thing that I want you to do is I want you to watch a video, and again, it's only about four minutes long, but it should give you some good information on how the lumbar puncture is performed, and after you view it, I'll come back and I'll discuss a little bit more. I'm Dr. Jess Mason, and we're going to show you how to do a lumbar puncture. You want to position your patient either in lateral recumbent or, as shown here, sitting upright. This patient prefers to sit upright. Now, either way, you want to have them arch their back and flex at the hip, and that's going to increase the distance between the spinous processes so your needle can more easily fit through. If they're sitting up, you can have them rest their feet on a stool, and then they can rest their head and their arms maybe on a table in front of them. Now, you can also consider giving them a little bit of benzodiazepine to help them through the procedure. Let's take a look at the real procedure done by Dr. Jordan Harp. Whether the patient is upright or lateral recumbent like this patient, identify the landmarks by palpating the posterior superior iliac crest, and where they meet in the midline should be L4, which is good. That's below the termination of the spinal cord, and we don't want to poke the spinal cord, so place a mark at this level. Clean the skin with antiseptic solution, and drape the patient to give yourself a sterile field. Anesthetize the skin with a wheel and then the subcutaneous tissue in the track that you're planning to pass the needle, and we hope we're right, we know we may have to redirect. While that anesthetic is taking effect, you can get ready, set your tubes up, and your manometer if you're going to check an opening pressure. To set up the manometer, take the two pieces of tubing and connect them, that way you can measure pressures greater than 36 centimeters of water. Now we're going to get the three-way stopcock and connect it here and your spinal needle will connect right here. Make sure the three-way stopcock is open to the spinal needle and to the manometer so the fluid column can rise up the manometer. Once you're done measuring your pressure, you're gonna turn that three-way stopcock so you collect the fluid from the column into your collection tube. Spinal needles come with a stylet in place. The bevel should be oriented longitudinally with the dural fibers. So if the patient is lateral, the bevel is up. And if the patient is upright, the bevel is to the side. Try to stay midline and imagine that you're aiming right towards the umbilicus or the umbilicus or the belly button. 
Your needle has to penetrate the supraspinous ligament, which connects the spinous processes and the ligamentum flavum, which connects the lamina of the adjacent vertebrae. So in theory, two pops. In an average size patient, that needle is going to be inserted about three quarters of the way. It might be a little farther than you think. Now, it's important as you advance the needle that you're checking frequently if you're in the spinal fluid because you won't always feel that pop through the ligaments. So remove the stylet and check for spinal fluid and then advance it a little further. And then remove the stylet and check for spinal fluid and then advance it a little further. Remove the stylet. Now, if you're still not getting spinal fluid after a few tries, you can remove the needle or you can pull it out just to the subcutaneous tissue, repalpate for your landmarks, and insert the needle again when you change angles just a little bit. Insert. And it looks like we're in right here. So I'm going to ask an assistant, Dr. Whitney Johnson, to come help me out at this point. If you wouldn't mind getting the manometer. And we will set this up right here. Would you hold the top for me? And you can see the fluid column starting to rise up the manometer to give us a pressure. Once we have our pressure measurement, we're now going to collect the spinal fluid from the manometer into our collection tube. So you turn the stopcock to open it up. And once it's drained out from the manometer, you can remove the manometer altogether and continue collecting your spinal fluid. This LP was pretty difficult and we ended up having to sit him upright to get spinal fluid. Normal CSF is clear. Try to collect a few milliliters of spinal fluid in each tube for testing. And remember, don't aspirate spinal fluid. Replace the stylet before removing the needle. And that's it, folks. That's an LP. Okay, so now that you've seen the video, again, this conjures up a lot of thoughts uh, going back years and years of when this procedure was done on either a relative or a friend of ours. And we always heard horror stories about how much it hurt. But trust me, with today's procedures and the technology with regards to the size of the needles, it's not really a bad procedure at all. And there's a couple of things that the doctor can do to minimize the amount of discomfort that you may experience during the procedure. They can numb the area with a topical, um, I guess what they call it is a paralytic, where it kind of paralyzes the skin where you don't feel the needle being inserted. And if worse comes down to worse, you can consult with an anesthesiologist and they can actually put you to sleep during the procedure. So again, this is something that you're gonna to need to talk to your doctor about. I myself, uh, you know, have been in a wheelchair all of my life for 51 years, almost 52, and I've had enough needles where needles don't necessarily bother me. But saying that, I've never really had a lumbar puncture, so I don't know what to expect. So this is going to be new to me, as I'm sure it will be new to most people that are watching this video right now. So talk with your doctor, uh, tell them what your concerns are, because with regards to pain management, you know, it used to be that they never gave you anything for pain unless you were already in pain. But the problem with that is once you're in pain, it takes a while for the pain medication to take effect. Doctors and hospitals have learned through the course of the last 15 or 20 years that pain management is a very necessary tool that they need to take with regards to their patients. So they may give you something before the procedure begins that'll minimize the amount of discomfort that you may feel. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to my YouTube channel, send me an email, or send me a message down below this video. And I promise I'll answer any questions that you guys may have. I hope you have a great day. God bless you. And until we see each other again.